cataractcoach.com. Zoniner loss and iris prolapse. Wow, how do you get out of this sticky situation? It's a very tough case. Now you can see here, patient has some sneaky air there. Prior history of uvatis. Looks like an almond valve or some sort of glaucoma ceton tube there as well. Main incision being done. We're just fast forwarding through the easy parts here. Now getting a rex is done. I like how the rex is centered up on the lens, even if the pupil dilation is asymmetric. So a beautiful job there. That looks good. And now let's watch. A little hydro dissection with a chain cannula. Rotate a little bit. Here comes the phaco probe. And let's see the technique here. It looks like a horizontal chop. There we go. Rotate. Another chop. Very efficient surgery. But just remember, every surgery is just another opportunity to have a complication, a challenge, and stress on your life. I'm only joking, but we both know it's true. Now, here we go, wolfing down the cataract pretty easily. That goes down very nice and simple. Let's just slow it down now when we get to the tough parts. Here's the tough parts. Here we go. So now what's going to happen? Now look at the pupil. Oh, oh, what happened? It's come down, way down. Look at that. So at this point, do you put in some iris hooks? Kind of tough to put in a, a pupil ring. Or do you just power through here? So here you go, removing the cortex. But watch carefully. As you're moving this cortex, I mean, the view is tough. That's really tough. You may want to have the second hand in there to lift up the iris. So you're going to have your chopper through your present. These to lift up the iris to give yourself a little better visualization to see what's going on here. Otherwise, it's just uh, it's a tougher, much tougher procedure here. There's the second instrument. I like it. Thank you. Good idea. No. Oh, look at the iris wanting to prolapse. So more viscoelastic. Okay, I'll take viscoelastic. Oh, look at the iris again. Now look, now it looks like there's some zonulopathy there. Let's look carefully. Viscoelastic going in, okay. Oh, there's still some cortex there to the left of the incision. I saw a big hunk right there. You kind of want to get that out. Let's take a look now. I probe again. There's going to be all kinds of cortex remaining, I think. You may want to, again, use that second instrument and maybe put some hooks in. Do something. we got to get a better view here. Hard to see exactly what's going on in this case. Did I tell you about our website, cataractcoach.com? So much good material on there. Our podcast, every week, a new podcast. You have to listen to it. There's so much great material to be learned there. So many valuable life lessons. Podcast available everywhere. Now, I like this technique with the second hand. Now, you can see just how much extra cortex there really is there. We're nowhere near being done. So now that second instrument can be a chopper, a kuglin hook, whatever else you want. Just to get a good view, just be careful of not nailing the capsule or the, the capsule rexus. Now, let's see what's going on. Did I'm watching this video for the first time with you. That's a lot of iris prolapse. It's a lot of iris. When the iris is prolapsed, your pairs and teases that iris is mad at you. You may as well just want to put the, put the hooks in and call it a day. Oof. Uh, again, that iris is mad. And now that, that viscoelastic, oh my goodness, now what? There's, they're burping it out. Okay, fix the pressure gradient. I like that idea. I like that idea here. Get that iris back in the eye. Pressure gradient resolved. Yeah, depress it. Let's, let's take out more viscoelastic from behind the iris. I agree with that. Now, but look at that rexus. I thought the rexus was a lot more centered at the beginning, so maybe you have a sub-incisional uh, issue now with uh, zonulopathy or zonular loss there. Be also very cautious. These blue iris, these blue irises, the damage is very evident. Here we go. There. Now the rexus looks pretty good, actually. Let's see what happens here. Was going to stay this way. So remember, sometimes you got viscoelastic in the eye, and the rexus can look great and look beautifully centered because it's full of viscoelastic. Now here comes the CTR, a little manual two-handed insertion that should do okay. Bring that around, and then as this goes around, let's see, get that in the bag. And drop that into place. Let's see. Let's see. And okay. I think that's going to help. Here comes the lens now. Looks like a single piece acrylic lens. Ah, it looks like the lens. Looks like a BNL Invista lens, which has a zero sphere collaboration profile, which may be better in a case where it's going to tend to decenter. So I like the lens choice. I think that was a smart move. So it has zero sphere collaboration as opposed to a slight negative sphere collaboration from other competing lenses like Technus or Alcon. Ooh, iris is still bothering me quite a bit here. This is a tough case. This case is taking time off my life just watching it. This is stressful. So what are you going to do here? Well, I'd certainly want to put a 10 nylon on that incision because look at that iris. It already wants to keep burping out. Now make sure there's no vitreous that's coming out there too. 
So here's that sub-incisional hook. Get rid of that thing. Can you bring that iris back down to a nice kind of more round configuration? And let's see. There you go. It looks like it's making some progress here. And is it reasonable enough to leave it like this now, where the lens looks like it's a little decentered? Yeah, as long as you're sure there's no video to the segment, you can always come back another day and do another procedure centered up. But boy, what a tough case. Hey, remember, check out our podcast, everywhere you find podcasts. Also, if you like your, these videos, you can watch me on Instagram.